Hey, Adam Enfroy here. Now, real quick before we get into the video for today, I just wanna let you know that we just released a brand new blogging masterclass for 2023. So it's a completely updated revamp with exactly what you need to do to make money blogging, and most importantly, what's working right now. So we cover the latest AI stuff, SEO tactics, search intent, affiliate marketing, and a lot more. Everything you need to know about what's currently working in this brand new training that is now the updated version of how we're making money blogging in 2023. So before we get started, please click the link below and sign up and watch that brand new masterclass. It's completely free to you. Now what you're about to watch here is the masterclass that we've actually had behind an opt-in gate for the last six months. So it's an insane training that tens of thousands of students have gone through and gotten crazy results with. So enjoy the video and I will see you in the next one. Welcome to today's free training on how to start a profitable blogging business. I'm very glad you found your way here, probably through a YouTube video or one of my blog posts. But either way, you are here because you wanna start a profitable blogging business and you wanna know what that entails, the strategy, the implementation, and all of that. So that's what we're gonna cover today. Today I'm gonna teach you how to to build a profitable online blogging business, exactly what it takes, the content, link building, affiliate marketing, all the stuff that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to become successful. It's gonna take, I'm not exactly sure how long it's gonna take, I haven't gone through this before. This is a new presentation, but it's gonna be really good. I'm excited, let's get into it. I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna show you basically everything. I'm holding nothing back. This isn't gonna be like a typical YouTube video. I'm gonna show you behind the scenes and exactly what you need to do. So first I wanna give you a quick brief overview of how I got here, because it makes sense. Let's get a little bit of uh, a background here. So in 2018, I was working full-time in the tech industry. So I was working in Austin, Texas. I was an affiliate manager, and then I was a digital marketing director. But I was also, you know, I was making six figures a year, but I was stressed, I was overworked, and I was stuck in the rat race. Basically, I saw my future. I saw no matter how far I went in my career, I'd be doing the same thing, talking about metrics in a report to somebody higher up than me that doesn't quite understand it, and being stressed out and driving through traffic and doing all of these things that I didn't wanna do. So. I started a blog as a means to an end, as a way to take my freedom back. It just so happened to work because I used some new strategies. So in 2019, I launched my blog as a side hustle while working full time. Now, I didn't learn from bloggers. I didn't learn from YouTubers or anyone trying to teach how to do this stuff. I learned from startups, what actual big companies do when they're growing their blogs. Companies like HubSpot or G2 or Big Commerce or Shopify. What do they do? What? You know, if they have unlimited budgets and they can do stuff, you know, I don't have any money, but what can I do? What can I learn from these startups when I'm building my blog? So these startup growth principles are what, you know, led to a lot of early success. And I got my blog from zero to 20K a month in passive income. Then in, you know, uh, July, 2019, I took my blog full time. So by 2020 and 2021, I was blogging full time. It was great. I traveled 10 countries. I got to, you know, I went from working 50, 60, 70 hours a week to working 10 hours a week, making passive income, traveling through Europe, Asia, Australia, and all of these different places. My life completely changed. And I was constantly learning and evolving and adapting. And I got it up to 100K a month in passive income. And today, 2022, I do blogging and YouTube. So the blog is completely automated now. There's writers, there's people doing all of the stuff that needs to be done from the blog so that I can focus on YouTube and actually teach. And that's the one thing that I, you know, can't outsource is me, myself. So I've built this to a $300,000 a month passive income machine with five revenue streams through affiliate marketing, ads, courses, sponsorships, all of these different things. I have a team of 10 people today. It went from just a blog of me on the side. This is part of this. It's like, how do we grow this on the side as one individual person? How do we spend time while we have a full-time job and grow it to something big? And I'm on pace to make $4 million in 2022. I'm creating and trying to teach what I call the unkillable machine. So how to, how to create something on the side in the background of your life that is personalized to you that you can actually do that isn't a scam. It's not drop shipping. It's not Amazon FBA. It's something that you can actually build for yourself in the background of your life and can make you money and change your life. And you can grow it to you know, as high as you want with no revenue ceiling. So just for some proof, because people always ask this stuff, I wanted to show this in this video. So this is so far, January to the end of April of 2022. As you can see, top line revenue, my accountants categorize this stuff. Revenue is $1.25 million and net operating income was $1.05 million. So that's an 83.8% profit margin, which is insane when you think about most restaurant profit margins are like six or 7%. So we're talking about highly profitable businesses here that we can run. And here's, you know, I tried to blur out some stuff here, but you can see uh, this is my Chase business checking account. It's my name, my Adam Enfro Ventures LLC. You can see that in this month specifically, there was $356,000 deposited. We can look at some of these and see like, okay, there's partner stack in there at 14,000. There's Stripe, Wix paid me 4,200. Wave 
it'll go down the list, but you can see that's like an actual bank statement. I just want to prove that this stuff is possible. So is this for you? Is building a blogging business for you? Well, if you're new to the online business world, but don't like the advice you see, then this is for you because that's why I exist. I wanted to prove that it's still possible. Not be an old blogger from 2010 who still teaches the same outdated advice, but somebody who started in 2019, who is still in the trenches, who is just a couple years removed for, from where you are and wants to teach it. This is for you if you've tried to make money online before and failed. I've tried five different times before I finally put all the pieces together to make it work. I've tried drop shipping, I've tried building a blog, I tried different things, but building it was like piecing together a puzzle and I finally made it work based on my career, based on learning these things, and I wanna teach it. So if you're interested in building a truly stable online business, this is for you because this isn't some viral hit on YouTube or growing an Instagram following. This is a stable business. I've made over $60,000 a month for the past 24 months in a row, and it's only been going up and being stable. Traffic fluctuations don't really matter when you have a stable business. If you want to make a free, few grand a month or a few hundred grand a month, this is for you because I've done both. If you're scared of putting yourself out there, then this is especially for you because when we start building online businesses, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, agencies, blogging, we have to put ourselves out there a little bit. We deal with imposter syndrome. So blogging is a great entry point because you're not showing your face like you are on YouTube. I, was, I would not be comfortable starting with YouTube three years ago. I wouldn't be ready for it. But Building the blog helped me kind of push through that imposter syndrome until I could get to a point where I'm actually comfortable doing this stuff. So if you're shy, you can still build a blog and kind of do it on your own without talking to anybody, just sending emails and building and writing content. So first we have to talk about what blogging is and is not today because there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to blogging. Blogging is not writing. Blogging is not a creative project where you're just writing all these different things. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's a data driven way to make money in the 2020s. It's a building a passive income machine. So this isn't long gone are the days of like writing content to an audience, updating them about your life, and then building an audience, and then eventually selling them something. Blogging today is a way to be a middleman in this evergreen engine, ranking on Google, and funneling traffic, and making affiliate commissions and, and ad revenue. It's building true influence, not some fake Instagram influence, but you can be a real influencer, even though I hate that word. My blog generates over a million dollars many months for software companies. And that's influence. If I can influence millions of dollars of purchase decisions, that's influence. Not an Instagrammer with 2 million followers that can't sell a t-shirt. So you're building real influence and authority online with a website. Blogging is also only getting bigger. So Google is, search is just continuing to rise. Think about all the people searching for products on Google, using Amazon, buying things online. That is not going anywhere. So the websites that are out there are making more money than they ever have before. We just need to update our strategies for the 2020s. And blogging is being a business owner, not a tortured writer. This isn't being Ernest Hemingway. This isn't changing every single blog post to be its own unique thing. You don't have to be a good writer. It's about assembling content in a templatized way, in a, a data-driven scientific way that can make you money. And it's one of the only businesses that you can easily outsource. You can truly be a business owner and not just a middle manager or a person that has to do everything because you can effectively slowly outsource it. When you start trickling in revenue, you can slowly build this thing in the background of your life while you have a full-time job. It's one of the only things you can do that. Podcasting, YouTube, all these things that take a ton of time. Blogging is not that. Blogging is truly though, when we think about it and sum it up, it's being the middleman or woman between a search and a purchase. Someone thinks of something in their head, they type it into Google. It could be a product like the best laptops, best credit cards, best camping gear, best kitchen knives, best whatever. And blogs are the middlemen recommending those products and services and making money. It's great to be a middleman. Uber is a middleman. DoorDash is a middleman. Grubhub is a middleman. They make a lot of money. So blogs are the personal brand version of that that can make you a middleman between a search and a purchase. That's the whole monetization path. So they, blog, they, they make money first through affiliate marketing. So when you Google something like podcast hosting and I show up number one for that, that's searched a good amount of times every month, funnels to my article on the best podcast hosting. And when you look at it, you can see that it's pretty much formatted the exact same way as every single other article that's a list post with these companies and formatting and table of contents. And then you can see here that there's a uh, call to action sentence with affiliate links and a button. That's it. That, that article makes over $10,000 a month every single month. And then we have something like screenwriting software. So I wrote one on that. I don't really, you know, I'm not a screenwriter. I have a couple buddies that are in the film industry, but I rank for best screenwriting software. And as you can see, again, this one has ads on it and there's an affiliate link on there and a sponsorship. So that one makes about $2,500 a month every month. Another random thing that's ranking and funneling traffic and making money. Then you can find unique opportunities in your niche that you may have never heard of. So here's one I ranked for called best OCR software. So I used search uh, SEO tools to find this. I didn't know what it was. Optical character recognition software, apparently. But I rank for that and I have some brands in there and I make about $1,500, $2,000 a month with this post every single month. So you start to see the power of just knowing these random keywords, ranking for them and templatizing a blog in the same way every single time. So it's about assembling content based on monetizable keywords. It's not about writing. It's about putting things 
in the way that Google likes to see them for the right keywords that can make you the most money. So it's actually pretty simple. So here is how to find money-making keywords in your niche. Well, here's the truth first. 16 to 20% of Google searches every year are brand new. So when we think about the billions, maybe even trillions, I don't know, of Google searches that happen every single second on earth. Well, if you take all of them in a year, 16 to 20% of them have never happened before. So that means that new blogs can be created and take part in this because timing is a big crucial component of keyword research that a lot of people don't talk about. You have to rank for keywords, but timing is really important. So if you can get in on something earlier than a big brand, then you, ha you are poised to make more money from that keyword. So there's a lot of new opportunities every year. There's a lot of new products being created that need reviews and comparisons. So there's always new opportunities in blogging. It's never saturated when there's just so many new products being created. The key is to find emerging keywords in your niche emerging and trending product categories. Think about yourself like Shark Tank. If you were on Shark Tank, the TV show, and you wanted to pitch a new product for an e-commerce product, they have a lot of e-commerce brands on there. Would you say, I created this new refrigerator and it has uh, an ice machine and it puts products in and you can keep things cool. They'd be like, why are you creating this? This existed 50 years ago. The same thing is true of blogging. We don't wanna write th about things that existed 15 years ago. That's why things that are really hard to rank for were written 15 years ago, like best web hosting, best VPNs. Some of these things that blogs you know, have already written about, we need to find the new and emerging stuff and the new technology in the niche, the new products. That's what's gonna keep us pushing forward and make more money with our blogs. So one way to do that is finding the best keywords based on search volume, keyword difficulty, and cost per click. So the first thing I'm gonna cover here is just finding these keyword opportunities to create blog posts to write about. So one target keyword, one blog post. So I'm gonna go to Ahrefs Keyword Explorer, and I'm gonna find keywords. And let me just show you one on my blog really quickly. So if we look at like something like website builders, we see that you know it's, mo it's optimized in the exact same way as all my other you know, business software posts. So these are review posts that give a certain number of products and have affiliate links throughout and rank for different things. Now we can see that the keyword here is best website builder. It's in the URL, it's in the title, the H1, which is the title, it's in the introduction right there. And it's throughout the content, boom. And it's the first H2 heading, what is the best website builder. It has the top picks for the best ones and it's very structured and formatted, but it's based on that one target keyword. There's not like five or 10 target keywords for this blog post. I'm targeting that specific one. So we have to target, remember, one keyword, one blog post. And how do we find them? Well, we can use a tool like Ahrefs and we can put in the word best because best signifies comparative content. I want us to look for the best mattress, the best uh, studio lighting equipment, anything, uh, best is typically in that search. So if I go to the matching terms tool, it's gonna bring me a ton of different stuff, but I could look up like best laptops, best laptop, let's say. And I can see all the different variations with this matching terms tool to see which ones are also here. So there's probably best gaming laptops, best, uh, yeah, best gaming laptops, best laptops for college deals. And we can look at these things based on the search volume. So the amount of times that people search it every month, the difficulty, so what competitive sites are already ranking for it, how hard is it to rank, how many links do you need, all of that. And then we can see the cost per click, so how valuable is it, are any brands bidding on that in AdWords? But what if we wanted to find like easy stuff to rank for? Well, we could just take the difficulty down and say the max can be 10, max of 10 difficulty, which means they're finding keywords that are easier to rank for. So I'm gonna also exclude the word buy because best buy is in there a lot, and I'm gonna also remove Reddit because sometimes Reddit uh, excuse the result, but let's look at this one. Best gaming laptop under 1500, best gaming laptop under 2000. Let's look at best gaming laptop under 2000. We can start to look at this stuff from a data and analytics standpoint and see that the keyword difficulty is six. It's not hard to rank for. The volume is 800, which is pretty good. And then let's see who's ranking. So this is key, like looking at the competition, seeing what's ranking, finding these opportunities based on, look at this site, very low authority. So domain rating is a, a number on a scale from zero to 100 based on the authority of the website. How hard are they to outrank? And that's based on backlinks. It's based on referring domains to that site. So we see like, if there's sites you've never heard of on page one ranking, that's a good sign that you can too. So like ilaptopworld.com, never heard of it. Techguided.com, laptop 251, my laptop guide salt money, all these low authority sites ranking on page one for something like that. And all you have to do then is like, if you look at one of these random articles, I assume that they're gonna be sending affiliate links to, look at this, this is a blog. 
they have ads on their article as well. So you can do ads plus affiliate links. And then you can see like they're just listing these laptops and then you can check it on Amazon and see. And then they get a commission on every sale through Amazon. And look at that, $1,500. So they can make a solid commission ranking with no links or anything like that, just finding these opportunities. Or what if we wanted to look up and, you know, that, so that's like the technology niche. You can look laptop, you can find these opportunities. But if I was going to start a golf blog, I would just search for best golf. And then here's all of my articles I would write. Best golf balls, shoes, clubs, bags, irons, drivers, range finders, grips. You get the point. If you are a blogger, there's only two types of posts that you ever need to write. Best posts, these transactional product roundup posts, whatever you want to call them, and then informational posts. So those two. Those two together is all you need. So best golf balls, golf shoes, all the equipment in the niche. And then if you look up like how to golf with the matching terms tool, it's going to say how to hold a golf club, swing, grip, hit, play golf, clean. You, there's literally 50 articles right here if you were a golfer that you could start writing and ranking for. And it's all about how to do stuff in the niche. So you can be a teacher. That's what bloggers are. They teach. And then to do the stuff, you probably need products. So then you review the products. Every niche has these. It's super easy. Two types of keywords to look for and you can find them. So what about like best couch? If you're in, uh, you know, let's say you love going to Wayfair, uh, you know, buying things on Wayfair and you love home decor and design. Well, what if we did the same thing with that and the keyword difficulty? We max it out at 10 and we see what opportunities are there. We'll look at this best couch under 500, best inflatable couch. That's an interesting one. No difficulty score, super low. The cost per click doesn't even, ex you know, really exist. And we'll see who's ranking on this. There's a site, furniturezest.com. No domain authority. They probably have barely any links to their site at all. Brand new looking site. Or Rhythm of the Home. Never heard of it. TheGeekyCamper.com. Never heard of that. You know, these tiny niche sites are ranking for this stuff, getting traffic for these terms. And all they're doing is, you know, sitting here, monetizing these unique keyword opportunities in a niche, and making money from affiliate marketing by sending people to different products. So that exists in almost every single niche, like every single niche has these opportunities. That's in a nutshell, you know, looking for best keywords with search volume, keyword difficulty, and cost per click. So that is one way that you can find keywords to make money in your niche using a tool like Ahrefs. Then what you got to do is create the content assembly line. So, okay, so we know that we need to create these articles, we know we need to structure them and format them the exact same way every single time. Well, Here's the truth, like you need to add a lot of stuff into your content calendar because a blog by itself is not going to be successful. You can start with, you know, one to five posts, but over time, every single blog post is like its own mini business. So you need to keep building a process for this so that you can assemble these posts as quickly as possible on the side of your full-time job, basically. We, it would be great if we could publish five of these articles a week. Maybe we just do one and that's enough. If you can publish one article a week, that is progress. That's 52 articles in a year but we need to do it in a templatized way to make maximum use of our time. So what we first do is add what I call the content assembly line. So Henry Ford created the assembly line. It's a, it's a uh, structured process to move things through production and content works the same way. So the first step is adding these keywords into your content calendar. Simple uh, spreadsheet, Google Sheets. Add the keyword in there so you don't forget about it. You can put columns for like search volume if you want. You can also think about what's the price of the product? Is there revenue potential there? Is it an expensive product? Maybe that has priority over a lower one. So ideally it would have good search volume, low difficulty, and it would be an expensive product. So you put all these things into your content calendar and you prioritize based on the opportunity, like I just said. And then what you do first is you write a templatized minimum viable post. So this is kind of the startup world that I like. Minimum viable post is a startup term like minimum viable product. So we don't want to write a 10,000 word article if we don't know it's going to rank, because that's the truth. We don't know everything's going to rank. So we create a minimum viable version of this. So maybe it's the top five best gaming laptops under 2000, not 20, not 30, five. And we start there and we do that and we create a minimum viable post, add the products. What do we need to add the affiliate links yet? We just want to create something that is published and indexed on Google. Then we do our on-page SEO. So this is a huge component of how you you know, tell Google that you are the best article. You do that based on where you put the keywords. So like I showed you, you have it in the title, in the intro, in the H2 heading, throughout the content. Then you use a tool like Surfer SEO. Surfer SEO literally shows you exactly where to put the keywords. So if I go to Surfer SEO, so this article is one we were using on how to use Zoom and you can use a tool like Surfer SEO 
and it literally tells you your exact content score, how many times to add every single specific keyword in there because semantic keywords are important. So Google's machine learning is getting smarter and smarter and they expect articles to be robust and full of helpful content. And semantic keywords are thematically related keywords. So we wanna rank for this main term, how to use Zoom. Well, Google will assume that if the article is about how to use Zoom, there should be all these other semantic keywords in here like meetings tab, waiting room, schedule meetings, meeting details, Zoom rooms. So throughout your content, as you're writing it, you put these words in, in you know, places that make sense as you're kind of assembling this content in the same way every single time. And it gives you a score and it increases and it increases your chances of ranking. Not everybody is using this stuff and it tells you exactly how many headings you need, images, paragraphs, all of that. So it makes it super easy and you use these on-page SEO tools to do that. You can also use a tool like Grammarly to improve your writing. So again, we don't have to be great writers because there's tools out there to help us. Surfer SEO, it tells us the keywords to put in the right places and you can do it pretty quickly. Uh, and then you use a tool like Grammarly and it tells you like, this is a use of passive voice, all the typos. Don't worry about typos or grammatical errors. You can have a free Grammarly account and just use that and then make sure the Grammarly score is good. No one's gonna judge you for punctuation errors or, or spelling errors or anything like that. And you're not gonna have any because you're using that. So on-page SEO is really important. Then you publish the article and you view your initial Google search rankings. So you might publish something and you're on page four. Okay, then what do I do? Well, maybe I'll update it a little bit. I'll go from five companies to seven products, you know, and see what happens. I'll make it better. I'll improve the surfer score. Maybe you start at 75 and you get it to 80. I'll make it a little bit better and improve the intro. You do these little things to update the post if you think it's viable and it starts ranking. Maybe it starts on page two, you update it and get it to page one. And then if it's really competitive, if it's something that you know, can make you a ton of money and it's really valuable and it's a niche a pillar and it's like one of those really valuable posts and you might need to build links to it. But not every single post needs links, only the ones that are really competitive. But here's the truth, not every post will rank. We can't predict these things. We can't say, I am this certain type of blogger and I'm going to force all this stuff to work. Google doesn't work that way. So you start to get some traffic, you start to build you know, a knowledge graph and expertise in a certain area, then you start ranking content easier in that area, but we can't force it. So not everything will rank. So how do we create it in the fastest time frame possible? How do we rank the most blog posts in the shortest time frame? Well, we create a content assembly line. So that's kind of what it looks like. It's like keyword research first. Get your keyword in there. Write your minimum viable post number one. Then you get your initial ranking. Then you can update it over time and continually improve your rankings. Get to page one, add your affiliate links in. Boom, monetization. And each blog post is like its own mini business. So I don't think of a blog as an entire blog and then you just add ads and everything to your blog. Each article on its own is its own mini business. So there's really two paths in blogging. We cover the keyword research and content. So that's content writing, on-page SEO, making sure Google likes it, it's formatted the right way with the right headings. The goal is to publish content. The speed of publishing velocity is on you. You can publish one article a week or you can publish two articles a week. Some big media sites publish 20 articles a day. You know, it depends on how much scale, money and leverage you have. But we can all start this stuff simply and easily with just you, one person publishing content maybe one article a week, that's all you can aim for, that's fine, because that is progress. That is better than nothing, and you will be able to rank for some things over time. So that's path number one. Path number two is link building. So link building is the other ranking factor when it comes to ranking online. So Google has you know, a, a, a ton of different ranking factors. One is everything on the page. So they basically their search engine spiders scan the page, they see the words, they see the headings, the structure, all of that. That's something that can be scientifically done and taught and you know done easily and without much effort. Like it takes time, but like anyone can do that. It's not that hard, it's not rocket science. Then there's also link building. So much like Google looks at the articles to see the words on the page, it also scans every single link and everything and how all websites interact with each other. So if New York Times links to your blog about something, that is a sign of trust in Google's eyes. And they're more likely to rank you because you're a more trusted source of information. That's what Google wants to, to rank is like safe content that they can trust. And links are really the only authority metric that can really quantify that. You know, you, anyone can write articles, anyone can put keywords in the right places, but not everybody can get links. So you can build a micro niche site without many links, but link building is a crucial component of building a blog. So that's things like guest blogging, link partnerships, the off-page SEO, getting other websites to link to your blog, by building real authority and influence in the real world, sending emails, sending LinkedIn messages, you know, getting out there and pushing your authority forward with the goal of getting links, because that's another ranking factor. So you need to master these first before outsourcing anything. So it's really, you know, these are the two disciplines in blogging. If you're gonna spend time doing stuff, these are the two things you spend your time on. So let's talk about links. Link building has been taught wrong for many years. So 
Links are an exchange of value. So when we think about link building, there's always these individual link building tactics that are taught, like do this, uh, you know, guest blogging, or find articles in this blog and do this technique and ask for links this way and send this perfect email message. And it doesn't work because it all of this stuff misses the psychology behind it. So links are an exchange of value. If I can get a link from a big site, it links to my blog, and then I rank for stuff, well, that has a real value in the real world. People are not gonna just give you that for free. So there's a lot of psychology behind it. They're like the currency of the internet. So how do we get more currency and how do we get links? Well, you know, we can create posts that are linkable. We can try to get passive links by creating posts on like statistics that people might need or trends or new research. Yes, but when we're first starting out as a new blogger and our domain authority is zero and we're not really ranking for anything yet, we need to do active link building ourselves. And to do that, we need to understand the value of links, we need to understand the psychology behind them, and we need to start building some for ourselves. So if they're valuable, then we can't just ask for them and be like, you know, I want links, give them to me for free. We have to actually be able to give other people links. We have to have value in that way. So ultimately, links pass authority from page to page and website to website. So internal links pass value from one article to another, much like an, uh, New York Times or CNN.com linking to your blog, it shows and passes value to you. The truth is not every post needs links, but posts that make you life-changing money probably need links to them. So if you're going to rank for something like, like I do for like podcast hosting, well, I got a lot of links to that post and proved a lot of value and got some big, big articles to link to me based on outreach and doing these methods. So we can create tiny niche sites, but a lot of people are scared of link building because they don't know how to do it. And it's the most difficult part of all of this. So we could either live on the sidelines and never do it, or we could actually just realize it's not that hard. It's just a numbers game of sending some messages to people that are pretty templatized and easy also. So we might as well just do it and not be scared of it. So how do we get links? We build a link building machine. There's the content assembly line and there's the link building machine. So when we talk about the link building machine, I think that uh, I like to say it that guest posts are the engine and partnerships are the fuel. So when you're writing a guest post, you reach out to a site, you say, I would like to write an article for your blog. And in that, you can write an article that is good for their audience. They like it. It's penned by you. You have the author bio, and you can link to your own blog in that guest post. So that link passing from the other blog to yours gives you authority and gets you SEO value. You can link to the homepage in the author bio, and you also want to link one to two times to your own blog in the content itself because those are more valuable. So that's simple. That's creating an article, linking from this website to yours, sending it in a Google Doc, um, and it's pretty structured and templated way. However, partnerships are also the fuel. So going back to that, how do we expand this further? Because that sounds like a lot of work, like writing articles for my blog, then writing guest posts. I don't want to do all of that. I don't want to write, write articles for other sites too. So there are hidden ways that this can be done. And this is something that I don't just share openly on YouTube all the time. This is because we're in the masterclass. We're in the free training. I want to give this stuff out. We'll get to it. Uh, your authority is a byproduct of consistent outreach via LinkedIn and email. You create a templated type of message and you just hammer it out there to content managers, people in your niche, and you don't give up. That is key. And then they eventually you'll have a response rate. Maybe 5 to 10% of them will accept a guest post by you. You go through the whole process. And this will start naturally evolving over time. So you build up your LinkedIn. You know, you start reaching out to people and bloggers and other companies in your niche. You can reach out to the sites that you'd want to be an affiliate for. So for example, if you are a outdoor person and you want to start a camping blog, then REI would be the ideal link. So you reach out to the content manager at REI. Say you're a camping blogger. Tell them your story. See if they're accepting guest posts. You'd love to collaborate on content. So you get this templated message that we teach. You send it to the party and then you can do the guest post. And then you start building these relationships. You keep it open. You can say like, I'd love to collaborate with you, partnerships. You could even jump on a Zoom call if you want or never and just email them. So you can always stay behind the computer and email. But these relationships start evolving. And then you keep sending messages out and then you might talk to another blogger in your niche. And then you say they're doing guest posts. And then maybe you trade links and you do all of these different things. But outreach is the way to build authority. You have to build relationships, even though they're relationships behind email and they're not that real, you can get links from them and they help build your authority in the real world. So here's an easy way to do link building. You write a guest post and you link back to your blog, pretty simple. More advanced, okay, you write a guest post and then you trade links with other people doing guest posts that also link to you. So you reach out to other blogs, you say, hey, you're doing guest posts too? All right, here's top five URLs that I'm looking to get links to. If you can link to my articles in your guest posts that you do from your outreach, I will also link to you in mine. Because the truth is, in a guest post, let's say it's 1,500 words or something, you can fit probably 10 links in there. So you wanna optimize them. 
I did this a lot in my early days of blogging. So I linked to myself a couple times, then I linked to big influencers that I wanted to work with, other websites that I wanted to work with and said, hey, when I, and then that just was a snowball effect of outreach. So I'm like, hey, I'm, I wanted like to do a guest post for you. By the way, I linked to you five times in these articles. These things are valuable. So the more that you can do them, the more guest posts you have going, in progress, trades being made, it's just a crazy snowball effect of authority. More advanced. You build partnerships with real brands and ask for link placements in old articles based on leverage. There's a lot in that sentence, so let me unpack that. This one is a little bit further along once you have a little bit of domain authority and you've built some links, but then once you start ranking for content, you have leverage. You have the ability to generate sales from your blog. So then you can go to the companies that might want to be added to your blog and you say, yes, I can do these things for you. I can add you to this article on the best camping gear or the best kitchen knives or whatever it is, the best software. And, but forever, I would like to write a guest post for you. Or actually, better yet, I want you to, can you add a link to me to your blog? And then you can say, I can find the spot for you to make it easy. I can specify it. And then you go back to one of their highest authority pages in Ahrefs and you look at it. And you say, I want a link from this article. Here's the anchor text. Please link to my blog here. And then what, if you do that, I'll add you to this post. Or you know, I'll move you up in this article. Or these other things that start building leverage into your real business and trading links that way. Now, it's kind of a deep nuanced subject like much of blogging is. So we don't want to always do one-to-one -one link exchanges. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of black, gray areas in this. So there's nuance to it. That's why we teach it very specifically in our community how to do it. Let's go to the most advanced. So this is what I did as well. You get a freelancer or an agency to write the guest post for you and allow them to add a link to each one. So what if you found another blogger who was starting a blog kind of similar, maybe in a niche somewhat similar to yours, and they're a freelance writer as well. And what if you do the pitching, so you pitch all the guest posts, send all the outreach, but then they do all the writing. And when they do the writing and you get the Google Doc back, you allow them to add one link to their own blog in it. People do this all the time. So there's ways to trade this stuff and to accelerate the expansion of your link building, thinking outside the box, not just doing, okay, I'm just gonna do guest posts. No, guest posts should not be a majority of your links. But the whole point of this, the whole point of link building is to make it seem like you were not involved in the link building. So that is the whole thing. No, we do not want every single link pointing to your website to have your face as the guest author. That would make it seem like you like yourself too much. What we need is random links that have no traceability random things that are authoritative and linking to you that aren't really related to you. So what if a random person that you, you know, met writes a guest post for another site and links to you? Well, how would they ever trace that back to you? Or what if you have leverage? I did this once with uh, Square and Wix. So I wanted a link from Square. I was talking to Square and their managers there. And they said, no, you know, we don't, uh, we don't do our own content, we don't do links, but we also manage the Weebly blog, it was Weebly. So we could link to you from the Weebly blog. So I found an authoritative page, I added a link in, and the article is like 10, 10 years old or something, or no, I think it was from 2016, and I have an old link in there. My blog didn't even exist back then, but you can get these links, and then that link placement, it can never really be traced back. So the whole point is, we need to think differently when it comes to link building. Content's easy, we can write the stuff on the page, we can do all of that. But there's advanced ways to do link building and it's not that difficult. It's just kind of starting to get your feet wet in it, understanding the concepts of it, understanding the value of links. You know, If I look at a site and I see, I've seen agencies charge for links, $1,000 a link, $2,000 a link. Some travel agent uh, websites are paying like $3,000 per link for high quality links. So they're very valuable. And the more that you start reaching out and doing guest posts, it's like, would I rather spend, would I rather get 500 bucks or get a good link? I would rather get a good link. That's the value of them because you can rank content with them. So with that said, blog monetization is ultimately a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. And it's easy. If you master the two disciplines, content and links, on-page SEO with these tools and some link building, you will, your blog will be monetized. Most people don't know how to do the link building stuff and use these, these tools this way and format it exactly. I understand how to format content exactly because I worked for a high growth tech startup that had the best people in the world at SEO. <laughs> like That's why everything of mine ranks. It's because I use the best tools, I format it the best way, and I do link building better than anyone else. So if you can take some of that, a little bit of that, and build it into your niche, you will be successful. You will be able to monetize your blog. So here's your blog monetization timeline. So there are a lot of ways to make money blogging, affiliate marketing, ads, courses, sponsored posts, email newsletters, whatever it is. But we don't wanna scrape pennies off the floor versus a $100 bill. So I see this a lot where people start a blog, they have five posts and they're like, I wanna join AdSense and I'm gonna make five cents a day. 
It's like, hold on, let's just expand the timeline a little bit, focus our efforts on content and link building to get traffic much higher for good keywords, and then we will make hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, and not focus on monetization right away. So I tell people, don't focus on monetization right out of the gate. Yes, we're focused on monetizable keywords. Yes, we're focused on the right content strategy from the beginning, but not necessarily monetizing it until we get traffic. If you expand your timeline, success is inevitable. If you follow these strategies and you do this content stuff and the link building, you will make money. It's that simple. There's so many opportunities in every niche with these keywords, but you can't make money like overnight. Blogging is not made like that. And everyone chases shiny objects. So everyone wants to get rich in 90 days. They want to do drop shipping, Amazon, start an agency, start TikTok, go viral here, viral there, invest in crypto, throw all your savings into crypto and just have no control over what happens. I just, please, I try to help people like, you have to put some work in. This is not, you know, nobody, you know, not everybody's doing this because it requires the right strategy implemented for a period of time. Now that period of time, you could make money in three to six months. You could make enough money to quit your job in a year, but you have to do stuff to build the passive income machine. So if you just expand your timeline and say, you know what? I wanna build something for myself and I wanna do it over the next two to five years. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of work in and I know that at the end of that timeline, I could be a millionaire. Well, if you put the consistent work in, you can be, but most people quit before they finish building the passive income machine in the first place. So success is inevitable if you just expand your timeline a little bit. Affiliate marketing in this blog monetization timeline is the first path because it dictates your content strategy. So we can write anything under the sun, but affiliate marketing and these opportunities, keywords that can make us more money can dictate the articles you write on your blog. So it might as well be the first path that you take. You don't need an existing audience. You start building content. It has much higher ROI than ads. So ads, ads are like the last resort of monetization. Think about cooking blogs and recipes that are littered with ads, it's because you're not gonna buy anything on that. You're not gonna click an affiliate link and purchase something when you're looking at a chicken soup recipe, but they wanna make passive ad revenue. So don't focus on ad revenue out of the gate, focus on affiliate marketing. You can make 10 times, 20 times, 30 times the revenue per visitor from affiliate marketing than you can with ads. And that comes down to search intent and what people are searching for. And affiliate marketing is the first revenue stream of many. So it was the first one for me. I love it because it takes your power back in this digital economy. I could funnel money, rank for content, funnel money from brands, rank and compete with these brands and make money as a personal brand. And it's the foundation, it's the backbone of the business, it was, and now I have other revenue streams, but it's the first one. So how affiliate marketing works, there's affiliate links. So affiliate links are basically a unique tracking link, just unique to you. So if I go to my uh, website and I go to this, we can see that there's different affiliate links throughout. So like zero, there's Wix. So we see like I added one here in the actual content. And then I have another one I add. So it's templatized. We teach this stuff exactly how to do it. So I have, this is like the company, then what it's best for, then my unique take. This is a Gutenberg block that's very easy to create. Then it's, you know, main sentence, uh, unique value proposition sentence, what it is best known for, affiliate link here. And you just basically select the text, get the affiliate link from the program, and then paste it in. And then if we scroll down, there's some features, user experience, pricing, these different templates that you can use and then get started with Wix. Look, I'm even missing a freaking period here. And there's a, <laughs> a button. This stuff, you know, perfectionism is the enemy of all of this. Let's just face it. But these are affiliate links. So affiliate links are interesting because they are uniquely trackable. So if you join a program, it'll be like wix.com slash user 74897A24JQ. And that's your affiliate link. And every time somebody clicks on that and goes to Wix, they know it came from you because it's a uniquely identified link. And there's also what's called a cookie duration. So in a user's browser, if they click your affiliate link, that stores the cookie in their browser and they know that they clicked your affiliate link. So they don't even have to purchase it right away. They could purchase it 30, 60, or 90 days later and you still get credit for that sale. So that's the power of affiliate marketing. You're getting credit for stuff later on. And that's the cookie duration that's set by the individual affiliate program. And there's commission rates and terms. So if you're in software, that could be 10 to 20 to 30% recurring commission. So every time that somebody signs up for software, you get paid every single month based on how long they stay a customer. So some of the, you know, the biggest ones I'm making money from is 30 to 40% recurring commission. So every time somebody signs up for an affiliate link, like if they go to best webinar software and they sign up through an affiliate link and they become a customer, I get paid every single month for that customer. So if my blog were to just blow up and explode and go away, I would still be making money because um, 
I have credit for all of those recurring customers. And then in like e-commerce, you know, maybe products, you're, you're in camping or outdoor or indoor kitchen gadgets. That's more uh, one-time recurring, uh, one-time commissions. So that can be 10% of the product. So we want to look for higher ticket products and all of these different things. Affiliate marketing is really easy. You join affiliate program. So you search for a company plus affiliate program. You know, Dick Sporting Good Affiliate Program. Then you just fill out a form, name, company name. If you don't have a company yet, just put your name, it's fine. Email address, I recommend you use a company email address or a domain name email address. So if it's Adam Enfroy, it's mine would be like adam at adamenfroy.com. You know, there might be a question or two, hit submit, they'll approve you or not. Typically they'll approve you. You join the program, you get to the dashboard, then you add your affiliate links. You copy the affiliate link, you paste it in, you can see all your traffic, your clicks, your commissions in there and exactly what's going on. Super simple to use. But here's the truth, you need to join a lot of affiliate programs to build a stable passive income machine. We don't wanna be reliant on one or two. And you should also have a keyword first approach to affiliate marketing, not a company first approach. So what I mean by that is you should use a tool like Ahrefs and do the keyword research first to spot the opportunities and then find the affiliate opportunities. This isn't a thing where it's like, I wanna promote Bluehost, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna join their affiliate program, then I'm gonna figure out how to promote them later and I'm gonna add them to my resources page that no one views and I'm gonna add them to my email newsletter that not many people are on or aren't interested in. This is all based on search intent. So when I talk about a keyword first approach, it starts by, going after the right product category keywords, unique new ones in the niche, you know, that thing like best inflatable sofa or best gaming laptop under 2000. Then you find the opportunities after that. So you can Google the term, look at the competition, what affiliate links already exist, what companies are there, and then put that in. So it's not like join an affiliate program and then create the content. It's create the content based on keyword research and then join the affiliate program after the fact. And affiliate marketing is a numbers game. So you can do back of the napkin math. So basically a 10% commission on a $5,000 treadmill is worth more than a 5% commission on a $3 pair of socks. So that's just how the, the world works. But it's all a numbers game. It's all based on having a good amount of articles out there consistently making you know ad revenue and affiliate revenue. So you wanna join programs that are high ticket or recurring because we don't wanna just make a few dollars. We wanna make life-changing money. Recurring is great because it builds a base that's pretty much in software, which is really competitive. Um, high ticket is also, you know, High ticket, what I mean is just basically high priced products. So luxury watches or like IRAs, people that, you know, affiliate, make affiliate commissions for IRAs, they might make 10% of a $500,000 IRA that somebody signs up for. So think a little bigger, think outside the box, but those are the two types of programs that you would want to join. And this is how the internet works. Things that can make a lot of money are the most competitive. So things that exist, a lot of people search for and are very expensive are going to be the most competitive things online with the biggest authority sites and like New York Times and all these major authority sites writing about it. So again, success goes back to finding new and emerging keywords in your niche that you can actually rank for. So how do you monetize your blog? You need to find these product categories that aren't too competitive yet and can still make you good money. That's key. We go, it goes back to keyword research. You can also find informational posts to start generating ad revenue. So when we're talking about the transactional posts, we can always look for the word best plus our products. You can use like uh, Ahrefs, you can use Google Trends, you can use Google Keyword Planner, you can use these different tools. But informational posts also are good. There's not direct transactional search intent. When someone's searching how to golf, they're not gonna buy a golf club. There's not transactional intent, but blogs can provide that information about golfing. And you can make a lot of ad revenue because those things are searched a lot. So you can look for like ideas posts, business ideas, kitchen ideas, dining room ideas, dinner ideas. Those are perfect for ad revenue. So find these ideas, how to, types of different informational search intent in your niche. Maybe if you're in fitness, it's exercises. So hip exercises, uh, lat uh, exercises, glute exercise, shoulder exercises. Look for those just different things to build ad revenue into your plan. And monetization is based on intent. So if it's a broad search where you're not sure what they want, they're not gonna buy something or go through an affiliate link, that's great for ads. If they're searching for something transactionally where there's a product involved, like best laptops, that's where affiliate revenue comes in. But here's the thing. Success comes from understanding all of this. So how do we do keyword research if we don't understand affiliate marketing? How do we do search intent and, and content creation if we don't know how to do keyword research? How can we make money blogging if we don't understand what makes money in the first place? So all of this stuff works together. It's like a flywheel effect. So you need to know keyword research. You need to know search intent to format the article correctly, create the content, know how affiliate marketing works. And this kind of goes back to your niche. So all of this stuff works together to build success. But what about your niche? How do you choose your niche? That's the first question I always get, and it's by far the most common question I get. Well, here's the truth. 
The niche is you. You are the only thing that you won't quit. When it comes to all these business ideas and joining a video like this to make money and watching a free training, you are the only thing that you won't quit. Not a niche site, a dro Amazon business, a drop shipping company, print on demand company agency or anything else. You, you are the thing you won't quit. So we created what's called the authority flywheel. And this is how to actually choose your niche. So you can be in anything. It can be based on your hobbies, your experiences, your interests, but this is the way to do it because this has also been taught wrong for so many years. They say, start with something you're passionate about and write content and you'll love it. But guess what? Passion does not equal money. Passion might keep you going a little bit, but if you're not making money and you're not getting any traffic and there's no significance and it's just a niche site, you're going to quit. So the best type of blog to build for yourself is something based around you. If you see yourself on the homepage of a website, what are you saying? What niche are you in? And ultimately at the beginning, we just have to pick a broad one. So not like smart home devices, but just technology or not email marketing software, but just software or not kitchen gadgets, but just home products, right? So we can you know, start broad and we start with the brand of you building that. So that starts with you. That starts with you and that's your unique identity. You are a unique individual. You are only you, no one else is you. So if you see your face on the website, what are you talking about? You are also a unique flow of experiences in the world. Niches change, search volume changes, people, products come and go. So you need to be adaptable. The whole point of success is the ability in a startup world to pivot and change and adapt the content strategy, the link building strategy, all the strategies need to be able to do that. And to do that, we base the niche on you. Now we think about your expertise. Do you have professional experience in a certain area? Maybe you're a photographer and, uh, or a lawyer or something like that. So what experience do you have? Some people say, I have no expertise. I'm not an expert in anything. I challenge you that you are because even if you have one step above a beginner, you are an expert to them. I was not an expert on blogging when I first started. I was not an expert on YouTube when I first started, but I was honest and I told where I was and I shared the journey that I went on and vulnerability sells. So you have expertise somewhere and you can find it. And then we also have to look at the market. So this is really important. This is taking into account affiliate opportunities, search volume, those things in Ahrefs. Like how big is it? Like if it's something like, if we're just talking about golf, for example, it's like, I wanna talk about putting. I'm gonna start putting, but well, it's like, well, that's too small. Or I wanna start a um, allergy friendly dog blog. It's like, well, that's probably too, well, that might be too small too. Or, you know, a specific type of dog breed blog. It's like, Elevate yourself a little bit. We don't have to live in the world of tiny niche sites. With these new strategies in the 2020s, content and link building, you can become a major force in your niche and not be a tiny niche site. So don't just think about like, I'm gonna start a vegan pet dog food blog. It's like, that's a little bit too small. So we look at the whole picture and we can look in and uh, validate the niche based on using tools like Ahrefs, seeing how many, you know, we need to write, let's say a hundred articles over the next couple of years. Are there a hundred articles you can write? Is there enough money to be made? So that's what we have to answer with that. And then your leverage. So we all have different starting lines in our life. We could be starting from nothing and no experience, no professional experience, or we could have some professional experience and a lot of industry connections. But if you do, you might as well use that to your advantage. So don't ignore it. I've seen a lot of people that, you know, I'm a lawyer and I want to, I don't want to start, a, they don't want to start a legal type of blog, which could be very successful, but they want to start like a, a vegan CrossFit blog because they like it. Well, sometimes that doesn't work out. So Ultimately, the niche is you, you use the authority flywheel, and then it might come down to like two ideas. So it could be like, I'm a project manager, so I wanna do project management, but also I really enjoy, um, you know, prepping and survival things, you know, that's a random example. But how do I choose between the hobby and the, the, the professional experience? Look for the market opportunities, think about what you want to be in five years, and just go with that one. Because these blogs build so much leverage into your life, and opportunities arise that you never even dreamed of. When I first started my blog, I didn't think I'd ever be on YouTube. I didn't think I'd have, you know, making $300,000 a month. I didn't think I'd be on Forbes or Business Insider or Entrepreneur articles. But all of it happened, and it was just because I started creating content. And look at some of the biggest personal brands out there. So Tony Robbins can write about anything from dating advice to money to health, whatever he wants, because the brand is him. He makes hundreds of millions of dollars doing it. Or Nomadic Matt, this is an interesting travel blog, and he writes about traveling the world on a budget, all kinds of different countries and places to go and how to do it but it's him, it's Nomadic Matt is the brand. Or Tom's Guide, one of the largest technology blogs in existence started as Tom's Guide to Technology. This is now a multi-million dollar enterprise and it started as a personal brand. BobVila.com, writing about camping gear, how to do stuff, power tools, all of it, that's a personal brand. Think about some of the biggest personal brands in the world making money, Joe Rogan, $100 million Spotify deal, he's a person. Who are your favorite YouTubers? Maybe Mr. Beast, 
That's an individual person. People want to buy from people. And you are your niche because you will change. You will be different in five years. The niches will be different in five years. You can't base your entire business and life on a keyword research report or a passion that you might not be interested in a couple of years. So my question to you is this, what have you been building for yourself? Have you been doing it? And how long are you gonna sit on the sidelines and not take control of your financial future? How long is it gonna take? You know, What is it gonna to take to actually make you realize that this isn't some 90 day thing to get rich quick, that you need to build something in the background of your life and that you can do it, it's not that hard, but you could just need to spend a little bit of time doing it. But what is it gonna take? How long are you gonna sit on the sidelines if you're not already doing it? And all of this has been taught wrong for so many years and this is where the problem lies. People teaching blogging and how to make money online, they all started back in 2010. So you think about the major influencers in the space, the people that we've all heard of that have podcasts or that have big websites. They started probably 12 to 15 years ago and they teach the same stuff today. Everyone chases the shiny objects. So think about crypto versus blogging. People just want to blast their money at crypto and because it's hands off, they don't have to do anything. But what if you actually took control of your financial future and built something for yourself? Most people quit before they actually put in the work. Maybe your blog does need 50 articles over the next year. And it's actually pretty fun just creating and assembling content, finding these unique opportunities, making money. Like it becomes the game of money, but most people just don't do it. Most people don't put enough work in. Traditional online business advice is based on a niche or tactic. It's not based on you. And that's where the nuance comes in. Everything has to be personalized. Everything in blogging is very nuanced. Blogging is like, you know, there's so many different little details. None of the details are hard. It's like putting together a puzzle. You know, it took me eight years to figure out all the pieces of the puzzle. I had one and then I had the last one hiding under the couch, but I finally found it and I put it together. And then I was like, oh, putting it in was easy. It just clicked into place. But I was missing major components for years because I didn't have the knowledge to do this stuff. So, you know, a lot of times it's create this niche site, do this little business, build something in 90 days, look at all these students' successes and you can do it overnight. And it's like, no, just build something for you. What do you want to be? Who do you want to become? You could start an outdoor blog and instead of just creating a tiny niche site about paintball or you know camping, you could be the outdoor person and your blog would have you on it and you would talk about camping, you could talk about skiing and mountain biking and gear and all of that stuff and have all this brand recognition and then you might get a deal with YouTube. You could have a Netflix show through this. Who knows what the, you know where this opportunity is going to go, but when it's you and when you have the ability to pivot and adapt, not pigeonhole yourself, have the creative liberty to build something that you want to that can actually make you money with the right strategy, you have to do it. And yeah, that's why building a business around you gives you the ultimate freedom to pivot. You need a business that gets you off the content hamster wheel and can be built in the background of your life for one to two years. So it doesn't take one to two years to make money. You can make it in three to six months, but you know, build something for yourself. If you want to become an entrepreneur, become an entrepreneur. If you don't, and you want to just work nine to five the rest of your life, do that too. But just know that to get to time freedom and passive income and building something, you need to spend some time doing it to get there. And with the economy the way it is, everyone needs a digital backup plan. So there's tons of layoffs happening in the startup world and all these different companies. And there's a big uh, you know, union and workers movement because people are pretty fed up with their jobs. And I always was that way. I never wanted to live a, a, a mediocre life and work for somebody else. And I, I didn't think that entrepreneurship was for me though, because I liked the consistency of having a paycheck. And I, I liked kind of having that. But what happens if like you get laid off? right? This gives you backup and control, like building something for yourself, whether it's a blog, a YouTube channel, just build something for yourself and have that as a backup plan. Because, you know, what happens if you lose your job, you can't pay the bills. And it's like, I have this thing. I have this blog. It's making thousands of dollars a month. Everyone needs to do this. Everyone should be doing this, but most people aren't because they don't want to put in a little bit of work. So here's exactly what to do. If you want to get started today, you create your blog on WordPress. WordPress is the de facto blogging platform. No questions asked, no you know, questions about it, like it's, it is. You create your core four pages. So we talk about this, there's your about page, your home page, your blog role, archive page, and your blog posts. So it's pretty simple, you just create that. You set up Google Analytics and Google Search Console. So that can be as simple as pasting it in, pasting the code in with a, with a plugin on WordPress. So you get your blog up, you get an active blog. You know, I recommend something like WPX to set it up, which is, has the best support and best hosting. Create your domain name, put your, your name.com, or you don't have to use your name specifically, but your name gives you the ultimate freedom to pivot. You could do something like Tom's Guide or Nomadic Matt where it's a different variation, but make it broad enough so that you can just create this forever. Like what if you just never wanted to sell it? What if you wanted to build the brand of you and really build it up for the next decade? 
what would that be? So that's how you set up your blog, you know. Then you do keyword research, so you can do the transactional posts to make affiliate revenue, informational posts to support them, add keywords into your content calendar, start planning it. Then you create your content assembly line. So that is how you're gonna structure the content, you know, adding, you, you only have to do like maybe 250 words a day. If you're gonna do one blog post a week, just write maybe one company in the review section or you write an intro or the outro, whatever you wanna do, but start creating a system to start sitting down and creating content. Then create your link building machine. So this is something like creating your outreach templates, starting to message people on LinkedIn, build up your profile, get this going. Maybe you send five messages a day, you just start building it. Then you start joining the affiliate programs and adding your affiliate links in. And in these best of transactional posts, try to add them to the top one to three companies in these best articles. And then keep joining them over time based on what's ranking, seeing things going to page two to page one, join the programs, add them in. It's a trickle effect. This whole thing takes time. And it's like the more programs you join, the more links you add in, the more rankings you get, the more money you make. I'm in over 300 affiliate programs today, but it started with one literally started with me joining one. Then you can uh, write from some informational posts to generate ad revenue. So once you get to 10,000 visitors a month, you can join an ad network, which I recommend outside of AdSense. You can add banner ads to your site. You can dictate what posts they're on and do all of that and make ad revenue. Then once you start making money, like by month three, I was outsourcing a little bit of the writing. I hired one writer for very cheap just to help me speed up the content production. But once you're trickling in some money, you can start outsourcing some of this stuff. So you have to master it first though. So master the templatized writing and then train people to do it. But really, this is about incrementally growing a real business in the background of your life for the next year or two. Now you can make money faster than that, of course, but we wanna incrementally build something. And this is why this is, the success rate can be so high more than any other type of thing, more than podcasting or YouTube, which can be random or starting some hands-on agency or an e-commerce brand or something. This is the best path, best path because you don't have to get the niche right from the very beginning. You build something that is you you build a website for yourself, you can pivot it and adapt over time, you get your feet wet in online business, you start creating content, you start learning, you start outsourcing, you start adapting, you start making money, and then the opportunities just flow into your life. But we wanna build a real business for ourselves. So we don't wanna just scrape pennies off the floor or think that a blog will make us $100 a month. You can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month with a blog. I'm proof of it, I started in 2019, it is possible. But success comes from implementing the right strategy consistently and over time. So there's the two paths of blogging, the content and link building. This is all you have to do. Add your affiliate links in and you're good. It's not that complicated, there's just a lot of little details. That is all that you have to do. And building a profitable blog is like crossing a bridge. So this is a bridge. This on the left is where you are now, and this is success, money, passive income, maybe leaving your full-time job, doing what you want with your time. But what if a single plank is missing from the bridge? Then basically you can't cross the bridge no matter how hard you try. And this is the unexpected gaps in your knowledge and the nuances of the online business world. So there's a lot of little details, right? How do I set up this website thing? How do I get the right domain name synced with the website? How do I make a table of contents on my blog? A lot of these things that are like easy, but a lot of little nuances to figure out. And you'll only get as far as your willingness to keep learning. So you can keep going and getting far, but until you hit an unexpected gap in your knowledge, you'll never cross the bridge and you have to keep learning and keep evolving. And you can never get enough knowledge, but the most important thing is walking across the damn bridge. So stop talking about the bridge, planning to go across the bridge, thinking and watching videos about the bridge, and just start taking action and just start walking. So thank you for watching this free training. I condensed as much as I could in my brain in about you know, 60, 70, 80 minutes, whatever it was. But I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching the free training. If you're ready to get serious about your blogging business, if you wanna make an extra 5K, 10K, 50K, 100K a month with a real online business, build something for yourself. And if you want the personalized support to get there and you're ready to change your life once and for all, you think you can do this, the success rate, you know, maybe for this video, you thought maybe 10%, maybe we can get you to 80% or more. And if you wanna make some passive income, then you need to click the link below this video and enroll in Blog Growth Engine. So. Blog Growth Engine is the best blogging course in the world. I created it. I spent $100,000 building it. There's 40 hours of video content. You get unlimited coaching. So unlimited one-to-one -one calls. Click a Calendly link, book a call, get on a Zoom call with somebody to help you. Live Loom video answers, keyword research and link building help, weekly Q&As, a very active community of tons and tons and tons, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blogging students. So it's a very private community. It's an awesome program. If you're ready really to take it seriously and take your blog to the next level, it's the best place to be. So make sure to you know click the link below this video, check it out on the next page, sign up, and I will be grateful to see you in that community. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in another video on YouTube, on the blog, or somewhere else. So have a great day.